Hey, welcome. This is Jim Patel, your instructor at Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program, EET 121, Digital 1. Uh, the last section of Chapter 1 deals with some tester instruments, which you hopefully are pretty familiar with, uh, most of these guys. There's a couple things I wanted to say uh, about some of these tester instruments used for digital purposes. Um, again, an oscope, we've already seen this guy. This is our basically a graphical display uh, voltages. Um, our power supply, nothing different about the OSCO. Power supplies. Uh, in the power supplies that we use in lab, you know how there's an A and a B, independent adjustment knobs, and there's our out. Our A and B. Well, if you've been in Monday's lab, you've already noticed and you point out this guy right here. There's another set of terminals right there. What that is is TTL 5 minutes. So basically you can just run your cable and power your protoboard from that from this section of uh, jacks right there rather than adjusting A to 5 volts and adjust, or adjusting B to 5 volts because you're going to need this set right here. This, you, don't have to, you don't have to mess with anything. Um, you can put those things in your, put the chips right there. And now I definitely recommend you guys actually using the runners, the vertical runners in this rather than having a, a bunch of wires. Don't go directly to the board. That's that's not very really recommended. Um, it's just going to get more and more confusing as uh, you get more and more theories. In there. Um, one thing I need to mention too is you definitely need to turn off the power supply right here. Turn this off when you pull a chip out. The reason why you could damage the chip, and I'll show you guys the chip checker and how to use that. I always recommend you do the chip checker before you put it into the circuit. Um, that's it for the power supply. Function generator. Okay, we were playing around with function generators last quarter, and we were doing sine waves. They also have a square wave. Okay, now you have to make sure that it is a logic compatible square wave because a regular square wave. 5 volts peak to peak is going to be centered on that zero axis. So 5 volts peak to peak, 2.5 high, low 2.5. So remember from our diagram before of our logic levels, between 0 and 0.8 it's a low, and from 2.5. Two volts to five volts is a high. So yeah, that 2.5 volts barely fits in there into a high. But I mean, look at the wiggle room you've got. You've got very little bit, only half a volt. So say if this uh, if this signal was attenuated just by a half a volt, you would be into this this area right here. Would be unacceptable. So, what you need to do is make sure that when you've got the, I think it's down here, in the function general, there's a bunch of other knobs and switches up here. Just making sure that it's a logic compatible uh, signal. So, what a logic compatible signal looks like, it's still a 5 volt peak to peak, but now look at this. goes from 0 to 5 as opposed to 2.5 through 0 to negative 2.5. So this is a logic compatible. Um, what's sweet too is these guys, the function generators upstairs, actually have a screen on it. 
So you know if you're producing a logic compatible or otherwise. Okay, so it actually shows you a visual representation of the signal you generate. Ones downstairs don't have a screen. So too bad, so sad. You pay attention to that switch. Logic compatible. Okay. Um, digital multimeter we've used before. Uh, logic Pro. What is a logic pro? Basically, all it is, if you could think about this, is a little flashlight. A little pro in the end. There is a high there, it blinks. If it's low, it's black or not lit. Uh, if it pulses steadily, then there's a data signal coming through there. Okay, so, a logic pro is kind of like a digital multimeter, except it's just got a it's got a visual representation. Okay, uh, we're actually going to make a logic probe in lab two, I believe. Logic pulsar is a little bit different. In fact, logic probe is detect. Logic pulsar is a supplier of digital data. So basically, it's you know, just put in a digital signal. What they're useful for is basically this guy's coming out of there. What they're useful for is just kind of troubleshooting. When you're on, you're putting it in on this wire. There's this box, and you're expecting the signal out here. So what you do, you have your logic pulsar, putting something into here, and at the other end you've got your logic probe checking it, whether it lights. Or doesn't light. Okay, so a pulsar supplies a digital signal. A probe detects it. Okay. Spell it better. Okay. All right. Uh, current tracer, current probe, same thing as a logic probe, uh, except it detects current going through there. So nothing special about that. Logic analyzer, logic analyzer. Think of an oscilloscope, except it can handle a bunch of signals. Um, a logic analyzer screen can show you signal A, signal B, signal C, clock signal. Let's say C stands for clock. And it shows you the relationship of the signals on the screen. Remember, right, this has got a special name called a timing. Okay, so that's what a logic analyzer is. It's just a really fancy oscilloscope used for digital signals. Okay, so this wraps up chapter one, and we're going to move on to, I think, chapter two is dealing with binary coding decimals and just how to switch numbers from one system to the next. Okay, so we will see each other then.